Now, dharma as reality in its highest meaning, beyond even the meaning of teaching, is the reality taught. What is it? In the relative world, all things are beginningless and interdependent. Even death is not the end of everything for an individual being. The subtle energy of consciousness is never destroyed, just like material energy. It is material energy, actually. I shouldn't say just like, it is material energy, it's just super subtle. Relative reality is everything. No one person or thing is really real or truly possesses the massive facticity in Peter Berger's great term, it appears to have. There is a relative world picture, though no relative world picture is absolute, is absolute reality, only a contextually appropriate description in a certain context in which there are the six realms of beings, the divine realms including the subtle material and the immaterial divine states. There are no absolute gods or states. Even in the dualistic vehicle of the Theravada Buddhists and the Mahasangika Buddhists, there is an awareness of the power of mental emanations, manomayakaya, what they call, included as quite a high fruit of the homeless life. The dualistic idea of nirvana as an absolute apart from the world gets it wrong according to non-dualist Mahayana thought. If nirvana, and it's a very simple reasoning really, if nirvana were an absolute reality apart from relative realities, its apartness would relativize it. It's as simple as that. There would be a boundary, a doorway to it. You would leave one to go into the other. It then becomes a relative space. It's not, no longer the absolute. A common type of ordinary person tends to think of nirvana as absolutely other only at the beginning of their path. And, that, and this, uh, this belief or this imagination that they have is never confirmed even in Theravada Buddhism by the Buddha. But he only allows them to think it temporarily to try to change their experience of relative suffering. Because such a person cannot imagine they are so sensitive to the suffering of life that they cannot imagine that this pains and you know, anxiety and anguish and so forth could actually be bliss if you understood what was really going on. This is unimaginable to the ordinary person. So they automatically will think, oh, nirvana must be some completely other state and then aim for that other state. And in general, this is a tendency among mystics where they think that somehow oneness with God, even in monotheistic situations, is some kind of leaving the universe because God creates it, but he's somehow apart from it. And so this projecting of the idea of an absolute apart from the relative that is nevertheless relative, relevant to the relative is a common human error projected from the feeling that the core of our own being is some sort of an absolute identity, you know, idem titi, you know, the, a, a, a true sameness, a true non-changing essence that is within us. So since we feel that, but we can't find it, we then project it into all sorts of things. Since we actually can't get away from our interconnectedness with everything, we imagine that there is some way to do so. Hence, the seemingly dualistic samsara nirvana approach of individual vehicle Buddhism, as I like to call it. I never call it lesser vehicle, because it's a foundational and important to the universal vehicle. But I call it individual vehicle. Buddhism is only an interpretable meaning in Buddhist hermeneutics teaching. The root delusion of being an absolute self apart from relative things, such as pain, naturally causes the deluded person to project and seek a state of absolute separation as a way of trying to withdraw from the entanglement in relativity. And this actually is something that materialist philosophers and scientists are very pleased and they feel this confirms their materialism, the idea that there's no escape and there's no absolute God controlling them and there's no absolute soul inside that God will put in an absolute hell. But unfortunately, they, because they haven't gone psychologically into their own inner sense of absolute self of themselves, their self-center, they, because they have not done that, they tend to make nothingness into an absolute and they feel that's where I go when I die. And that's how I am disconnected, actually, from all this relativity. So they still maintain in their mind an image of some sort of absolute thing apart. And even psychotically, therefore, those of us educated, as we all are, in schools where scientists tell us as if they had discovered it, that the real reality of everything is nothing, that we kind of are nothing. 
And therefore, people in a situation of great pain, like the people on top of the World Trade Center who didn't want to burn to death, they made a choice of jumping, thinking they would die by slapping into the pavement or by suffocating in the fall as a quicker, easier way to go into the nothing and go into the anesthetic universe of nothing and escape from the pain. And uh, that means that you go around thinking that at root, you are nothing right now. And that, of course, is very depressing on a subliminal level and, uh, of course, utterly irrational as well. So liberation from misknowledge about an absolute self is not extinction of the relative self. It frees the relative self from the prison of its habitually and instinctually assumed absoluteness. Concentration and wisdom insight in combination is the key to becoming aware. Nirvana is not blanking out like, like mere unconsciousness, as evidenced in the Pali discourse of the Theravada tradition called Fruits of the Homeless Life in translation, in that sutta, where the highest goal of the ascetic life or the seeker's life, according to Buddha, in talking to a king, is, is reaching a place of beholding a crystal clear pond. Reality becomes like a crystal clear pond to you, high in the mountains, where you can see every single little pebble and plant at the bottom of the pond. So that's a hint right there that nirvana, which he's describing there, is not some sort of disconnection from all relative consciousness. It's a complete clarity of consciousness and being aware of all the differentiations and things in a completely new and pleasant way.